big topic of interest for people. All right, we're going live on YouTube. We're here. Boom. And we're live. Awesome. Well, welcome, everybody. Today, we're going to be talking about anxiety disorders, the vagus nerve connection. It's going to be a very uh, in-depth video on how does the vagus nerve interact with anxiety and what you can do to resolve anxiety. Vagus nerve stimulation, for instance, is a really good way uh, to deal with anxiety. You often notice I'm pretty, pretty calm and pretty chill. I definitely stimulate my vagus nerve a lot, so it definitely helps. Like for me, anxiety is not even a, a, a word that is in my, it's not even in my vocabulary basically. So, um, so cool, super excited. But before we go into the topic of the video, uh, hey, Lori, good to see you. Uh, we're gonna talk, we're gonna do the simultaneous squeeze. So all that is, is we're gonna take a deep breath in together on the count of three. We're gonna take a deep breath in through our lungs, through our mouth. Then you're gonna take an extra sip of air, really fill in your lungs. You're gonna take your air and just kind of squeeze it down and kind of squeeze it and bear down like you're trying to blow out a balloon, like a like a hard squeeze. But you're gonna retain that air in your lungs and that's gonna help squeeze your vagus nerve where your diaphragm is and it's gonna give you kind of a, a nice like calming sensation. It's gonna release acetylcholine uh, great, Lynn. I, I hope you can join us for this simultaneous squeeze. It could could be could make you feel good. I'd love to hear your opinion on it. Um, so yeah, that's the instructions. Ready? Let's let's do it. So in three, two, one. Deep breath in. <sighs> Sip of air at the top. <sighs> Hold and squeeze. And slowly exhale. Good. So the the muscles that I'm engaging are kind of around the stomach, around the chest, around the very bottom of my rib cage. I'm kind of like squeezing in, like squeezing it in really for the purpose of moving all that blood up and into the head. Okay. Um, so awesome. Well, good. Well, Lynn, I'm, I'm glad you're here. This is definitely going to be, uh, you know, definitely a relevant subject. So, so let's crack into it. So in terms of anxiety disorders, generally speaking, um, anxiety disorders are known to affect uh, millions of people worldwide, probably hundreds of millions, if not billions technically. But when it, when it resolves to the level of a disorder, it's probably in the many millions of people in, a, in a, any one moment. Um, so that can cause significant distress and impair daily function, as we know. Now, while there are various factors that contribute to anxiety, recent studies and research has shed light on the vagus nerve connection and anxiety. So in this video, we're going to go over the details of the fascinating relationship and explore how understanding it can potentially lead to new treatments and approaches for anxiety. I've certainly seen some incredible uh, modifications or changes in clients' relationship to anxiety once they pursue vagus nerve stimulation. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, but of course, you know, if you're up to breathing every day, which we are, um, then I highly recommend that you do something like a breathing practice. Um, so real quick, I'm just going to try and time stamp the video so people watching the replay uh, can kind of get into the the chapters, basically. So, um, so so let's start here at the top. So let's understand the vagus nerve a little bit here. So the vagus nerve is typically understood to be the 10th cranial nerve. It comes out of your brain stem, goes out of your skull, runs down your neck, and, and innervates many different organs throughout your body. So it regulates your heart function. So you know your heart also regulates your kidney function, which is really, really important when it comes to regulating um, spikes of adrenaline, norepinephrine stress hormones, cortisol, are all going to be released primarily um, from your kidneys, well, your adrenal glands at the top of your kidneys. So your vagus nerve does go down to that area, and it does help co-regulate with uh, anxiety. Um, so the, yeah, the, 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 the nerve plays a crucial role in regulating a ton of bodily functions, um, including your heart rate, your digestion, and your respiratory rate. So typically, you'll see people um, having an anxiety attack, maybe hyperventilating. Um, 
hyperventilation is also a, a co-process of the vagus nerve. Um, so breathing as well, we, you can use breathing to put yourself into a stressful mode and you can use breathing as well to get yourself out of a stressful mode. So that's a really important kind of insight. Um, so now looking at the next part, let's talk about the role of the vagus nerve in anxiety. So when it comes to uh, the role of the vagus nerve in anxiety, specifically research has suggested that the vagus nerve does play a significant role in regulating, and this is an interesting one, our emotional state. Did you know that? So your vagus nerve actually, if I were gonna go further to the latest research, like top of the line research that's just been studied, studied and published within the last 12 months only, right? Because you know we're, when we talk about the vagus nerve, and when you go on, on blogs and you read about the vagus nerve, you're reading information from, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago when we didn't actually know that much about the vagus nerve. You know, I'm up to date on the pretty much down to the day of the research. I follow the biggest researchers on Twitter as they publish data. And I also run my own consortium of clients who are using vagus nerve stimulation. So I get to see stuff in real time. And so I really do understand as much as one could the relationship between the vagus nerve and these processes. So it's possible that your vagus nerve is a generator of emotions. Those emotions are generated in your gut, most likely in your stomach, you know, your second brain, your gut intuition feeling. And then those are transmitted up the vagus nerve into your brainstem and then project into your brain. So you have the conscious experience of that. And this can all happen in, in seemingly real time, but there actually is a delay. So typically what they, what they found is that when someone is exposed to a loud bang or a sound is that their vagus nerve in their stomach activates first. And then, you know, 10 milliseconds later, very small fractions of a second later, those signals go shh and they shoot up into the brain. So it's more that your vagus nerve reacts first and then your brain gets the signal a little bit later. So that's that's really important to know, especially when we're talking about uh, when you're trying to deal with anxiety, treating it from a brain-centric perspective may be completely wrong. And that actually treating things like anxiety disorders may be more uh, appropriate in terms of treating stomach disorders, actually. So your gut-brain axis, that axis is the vagus nerve. So I've actually seen more success with treating gut dysbiosis in cases of anxiety than treating brain-based models like, you know, antidepressants, for instance. And did you know, most antidepressants, they first act on the gut and then they send the serotonin up to your brain. So, it, you know, again, these models are very skewed and the drug manufacturers aren't telling you that, right? They're not telling you, well, actually the serotonin is actually going to be released in your gut first and have the effects there. That's where the effectiveness is. So there's more of a role for the vagus nerve here in emotional dysregulation than it has been initially uh, shared, I think, in my reading from be being on the internet and social media. Um, so the vagus nerve is also responsible for your general parasympathetic nervous system's um, activation which promotes relaxation and counters the negative effects of the sympathetic nervous system, which can, you know, be responsible for that, that fight or flight, uh, adrenaline rush feeling that, that response. Now, when we experience anxiety, the sympathetic nervous system becomes overactive. Your fight or flight system becomes way over dominant, and that's not good leading to an increased heart rate, rapid breathing, heightened alertness, etc. However, the vagus nerve can act as a natural braking mechanism, which can help to calm the body down and to restore balance, to restore homeostasis to your body. It does this by releasing neurotransmitters such as acetylcholine, which is handily uh, represented here in its molecular form right behind me. So now you know what that is. That's the molecule for acetylcholine, which is the parasympathetic uh, neurotransmitter, which is the vagus nerve's neurotransmitter. Um, so, uh, yeah, so acetylcholine, the neurotransmitter inhibits the release of stress hormones like cortisol. So if you can get there in time to activate the vagus nerve, you can in large part prevent 
anxiety from taking hold. Because once cortisol gets released, then you really can have lasting hours long of that uncomfortable feeling. So anyway, um, and then real quickly, um, if your body has adrenaline rushing through it for more than three minutes, then you can get that spike of cortisol, which can last for hours. Something to know. So let's talk about, you know, how do you activate the vagus nerve, right? Stimulation of the vagus nerve can act as a treatment for anxiety legitimately. Um, so given the vagus nerve's role in anxiety regulation, um, researchers have explored recently the potential of vagus nerve stimulation or VNS as a treatment option for anxiety disorders very successfully too. So VNS involves typically VNS can involve many different things, right? Now in, in sort of the literature, generally the literature is going to say vagus nerve stimulation involves the implantation of a electrode that wraps around your vagus nerve. Now that's not typically how I use the term VNS. So in reading online, it's gonna show VNS as the implanted version, but vagus nerve stimulation can go as far as a handheld external VNS device um, that you place against your neck. Some of those can be ultrasound based and some of them can be electrical based. So there are, there are today a lot more options for safely and effectively stimulating your vagus nerve. Um, so that's something that I think is important to know. But generally speaking, vagus nerve stimulation involves externally stimulating the vagus nerve to activate the parasympathetic system, um, thereby modulating its activity and promoting a sense of calm. That sense of calm can happen if you successfully stimulate your vagus nerve, which is good. So se several studies have shown promising results in using vagus nerve stimulation to alleviate anxiety symptoms. For instance, a study published in the Journal of Clinical Psychiatry found that VNS significantly reduced anxiety levels in patients with treatment resistance general anxiety disorder, so GAD. Another study published in Biological Psychiatry demonstrated that VNS improves anxiety symptoms in individuals with post-traumatic stress disorder. So VNS can go really deep into the treatment when we're talking about some pretty severe cases of generalized anxiety disorder and PTSD. Um, there's another study that I, that I had posted um, a few weeks back, which showed that vagus nerve stimulation can actually extinguish fear associated with PTSD almost instantaneously. So the biggest, the biggest um, fallout from PTSD and from trauma is the, is the body's resolution to choose a fearful response as opposed to a, honestly, this may sound woo woo, but a more of a, a calm, rosy colored perspective, right? So if somebody, if something happens to you that's not, that you don't like, there are two ways to go about it. One is to say, this is, this is a sign that God himself hates me. Um, I'm doomed. I'm destined for failure. I'm, I'm going to be like this forever and that my life isn't worth living. That's a belief that's created from, that can be created from trauma that's in a fear-based response. However, people have learned that you can retrain that mechanism to instead of jumping to the worst possible conclusion is to instead try to find the good in the situation, right? And for those who are tuning in a little bit late, one thing that I posted at the very, very top of the comments was a, you know, a little bit off subject but was a study out of Singapore that showed that the rates of chronic kidney disease are spiking at an absurd level. There are so many new cases of chronic kidney disease that they don't even have enough dialysis centers to treat kidney failure. They're going to run out. There are going to be people in Singapore who are, have full-on kidney failure, who have no access to treatment and will die very shortly. And if you read the comments of that video that I posted, right, not to get too depressing, but this is pretty serious stuff, is that a lot of the comments said that while eliminating sugar and eliminating high salt content foods was important, that they also found that stress relief 
and, in, and dealing and coping with anger and fear-based issues was also a crucial component of reducing inflammation in their body. And when I say things like choose gratitude over fear, I really do mean it. These, have, these do have implications for your whole body. When your body chooses that fear-based option, your, it, it signals all the way, your whole nervous system signals down to your fingertips to start producing inflammation. Fear creates inflammation. Gratitude creates the clearing of inflammation. So you need to do everything in your power to choose, to choose the gratitude option. You can't afford to be in the fearful state, right? Now, your body, look, if there's legitimately a, 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 an actual life-threatening situation, trust me, your body is going to react just fine. You're never going to forget or lose that instinctual response. But in your day-to-day -day life, when you're sitting at home and you're having an anxiety attack, when there's nothing that's fundamentally life-threatening, having anxiety ar around that kind of stuff is, is literally eating your body from the inside out. So you need to make that real choice to say, how do I do other things that can get me into a gratitude state? And so we're going to share some of those options for you as well here. So um, that brings me to the next step, which is, you know, now that we know that vagus nerve stimulation is great, what are some things that can that you can do um, tangibly to uh, to fix this? So um, so let's talk a little bit about you know mind body techniques and vagus nerve activation, right? So there's absolutely a role to be played that's outside of just handheld vagus nerve stimulators. However, I would almost in most cases, if somebody came to me and they're like, I have I've been damaged by COVID or I had a vaccine injury or I had some some really bad thing happen to me, whiplash, neck injury, vagus nerve damage, something like that. I'd say, look, the mind body stuff it should be done. However, you should absolutely in that time, there's a crucial window of recovery where you should be using VNS technology alongside other mind body techniques. So I still in a lot of cases will still recommend getting yourself on board with some form of a VNS based treatment. Um, you know, again, meditation and breathing and gargling water are great. Humming and singing are great options. Um, but it, it's hard for me to look at someone who's having like a severe, uh, anxiety disorder and say, yeah, I, you know, I think that humming is going to be really good. You should do it. You should do humming every day. I think they should, but they need to be stimulating their vagus nerve, right? We, we even see in healthy people that stimulating their vagus nerve is like opens up a whole new world of opportunities that just humming and these kinds of things can't get them. So yeah, definitely still recommend VNS as a treatment option. Um, but from a mind body technique perspective, I definitely want to share some options. Um, so in addition to vagus nerve stimulation technology, there are also mind body techniques that can help activate the vagus nerve. Um, and reduce anxiety, significantly reduce anxiety. Some of these techniques include deep breathing exercises. So what we did at the very beginning of the video with a simultaneous squeeze is a deep breathing exercise. Um, meditation can be really good. Yoga, really good for the body, helps move things. Doing progressive muscle relaxation, that can be really good through hypnosis. Um, engaging in these practices regularly can help stimulate the vagus nerves activity, um, which can lead to a calmer state of mind and reduced anxiety levels. So certainly there's a role to be played for, for those tangible, obvious um, mind-body techniques. One other technique that I do with clients and that I, is, is actually available to even non-clients, um, and I do this because I believe it, it is so valuable, um, it's called engaging the... Um, parasympathetic uh, system with the hour of power audio. So I'm going to post that here in the chat for people to have the link so you know what it looks like. Um, and this is called engaging the parasympathetic state with the hour of power audio. So that links you to a, a Google document that tells you and gives you a, um, a guided 
meditation that you do while you're walking. It's a guided affirmation, gratitude, exercise process. So you'll be outside, you'll be walking, you'll be breathing. It really, that one audio covers all of the main things that are required to maintain a good vagus nerve. Because I figured, you know, most people will do a little bit of deep breathing and then meditation and then prayer all separately throughout the day. And it's easy for those things to take a back seat when you're having a stressful day. But if you can optimize around, what if we put breathing and affirmations and gratitude and positive visualization and movement and deep breathing all together, strung together in a, in a sequence while being guided, while playing beautiful music. I mean, I, I, you know, I think those who are in the program can attest is the music that is played during the hour of power, not like absolutely calming in and of itself. It's beautiful. It's, it's affirming. It's all hand selected by me. You know, the hour of power is something that I created for, um, for not only for myself, but for clients, you know, I always knew that it would be super valuable for people. And it's based off of some of the best interventions for getting people, again, having that daily repeatable practice and process of getting themselves into a really good state. Um, so that hour, that document right there, hour of power and engaging the parasympathetic state is well loved, well used inside of our program, but you don't have to be in our program to start doing that. I don't think that that should be something that, you know, I'm dangling like a carrot in front of people to say, Hey, you have to join our program to feel amazing. Um, if you did that, uh, you can tangibly feel amazing. And part of the reason that's so beneficial is because there's a pair of headphones that you will load it onto. So you have no phone, hands-free. You just basically press play, turn up the volume, and you go outside walking. And these use a little bit of bone conduction, and they stimulate part of the vagus nerve through the ear canal by the, the, the certain frequencies that are played out of it. But it's all music, and you can listen to it first before you you do you do any of that stuff um so it's it's pretty it's pretty remarkable it's pretty amazing um but yeah all the information's in that document so again from a perspective of what would i personally recommend for a mind body technique that can powerfully activate your vagus nerve uh, it's probably a little bit too late but uh on monday um my wife and i went for a walk around our neighborhood i actually have two of these i use i have two of these at home always charging with this exact same audio, the hour of power. Um, and I play one for her and I play one for me and we walk around, we're smiling, we're laughing, we're dancing, we're breathing, we're visualizing. She's like, she's like, you know, I had this beautiful vision. I want to have a, when we get old and, 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 and uh, retired together, I want us to have a lavender farm in our backyard. And I was like, that's really cool. I love that idea. Um, and she's like, yeah, we can sell lavender ice cream in a little shop by the side of the road um, and all that stuff, right? So again, it, th there's just, how could you be anxious if you're putting yourself into that state? It's truly, I believe that your brain can't occupy the same two fear-based responses and gratitude responses at the same time. You just can't do it, right? I, I, I dare you to try to do two at the same time. Um, you know, again, when you're in that state, fear is just not a, an option for you at that point in time. And that's healthy. It's anti-inflammatory. Um, so yeah, again, the mind from the mind body perspective, again, reading back to that, that comment section on that video on chronic kidney disease in Singapore, which is becoming a crisis, countless of the comments said that they, they, if, if they could have only dealt with the fear and anxiety and anger issues early on, they probably could have kept their kidney healthier. Again, b allowing yourself to be under this kind of stress for so long, day after day after day, and not taking solid action. I'm telling you guys, this hour of power, this document is available right now. You can go get the heads headsets shipped to you from Amazon Prime. I don't make any money off of any of this stuff, right? This is not provided as a way to, to you know, make a couple bucks on a headset. 
I, I make the full recommendation as the honest, as the most honest recommendation for a mind body technique to stimulate your vagus nerve that I possibly can. Um, and it's awesome. And Char Charlene wrote awesome with a heart. Um, she's a user of that. She does it practically every day. Um, uh, so that that's an amazing intervention. You know, again, like breathing or humming or gargling, these things are great. And probably taking some medication is an okay idea at some point in time. But um, last week, I was had just had a bunch of conversations with a, a handful of clients that signed up in a batch together who are dealing with the repercussions of benzodiazepine withdrawal and benzodiazepine damage. Um, they, these were people who, in a moment of anxiety, went to their doctor and their doctor said, best thing to do would be to take Xanax. Oh, Xanax will solve all these issues for you, no problem. They, the doctor didn't warn them about the long-term physical dependence that would develop from benzodiazepines, not to mention the uh, dangerous chronic neurological damage to GABA, GABA receptors in the brain um, and, and uh, you know, different types of glutamate toxicity in the brain from trying to even taper to try and quit Xanax. Um, they were never warned about any of that stuff. So again, you know, when we're talking about anxiety, dealing with it in an, in a good, appropriate way and not resorting to taking Xanax or Clonopin to help with an anxiety disorder is a really solid idea. You do not want to be on those medications. I swear to God, they are not, they are short term. They're going to basically, what? What might they be doing to the brain if they reduce an anxiety attack, but then trying to quit them is neurologically like life threatening? How good of a medication is that really? Right? There's something more that needs to be dealt with in that case, obviously. Right? So you can't take those routes. Um, and we know from research that vagus nerve stimulation is absolutely well tolerated. There's almost zero adverse events in vagus nerve stimulation in, in the world of vagus nerve stimulation should be done. There's zero adverse events that will happen from doing the hour of power. I can guarantee you that there is zero side effects that will happen from you. If you did the hour of power audio, if you, if you put these bad boys on and you go outside walking, <laughs> And you say, every day in every way, I'm getting better and better. Yes. Right? So what, what's the negative side effect from that? Um, that, you, that, you, uh, that you are afraid of. There's nothing to be afraid of with that type of intervention. Um, so anyway, um, but there's, there's definitely good options for you. Um, and then also, lastly, let's, let's kind of do the, the summary here. So in conclusion, um, from generally speaking from our whole, uh, from our whole video today, um, the connection between the vagus nerve and anxiety is an exciting area of research that holds great potential and promise for understanding and treating anxiety disorders um, more effectively without drugs and without dangerous chemicals and da without dangerous side effects from those chemicals used to treat anxiety. So by exploring the role the vagus nerve plays in anxiety, um, regulation, researchers have been able to discover um, some potential and effective treatment options such as vagus nerve stimulation and mind-body techniques. Those are the two best options. Notice I'm not, of course, if you're talking about anxiety, yeah, you could go take Xanax. You could, but Xanax is going to end up screwing up your life far more down the line. You got to think long term here, right? You got to think long-term side effects of Xanax and Clonopin and benzodiazepines for, for panic attacks is potentially life altering in a very negative way. Um, so the two, two main things would be vagus nerve stimulation and mind body techniques. Okay. So those things would be really, really good options. A lot of the folks that are in our phase one program, uh, really attest and swear by the handheld vagus nerve stimulator that we use in our program. 
exclusively in our program. Um, it, it just does seem to almost make an immediate difference in that client's relationship to their own mental processes. They just don't care as much about the thoughts going on in their head from a negative perspective. And they take more seriously the, the good thoughts. There really is something very, I think, unexplored when it comes to the vagus nerve and when you stimulate it in relationship to, to you helping yourself. I think there's something really, really powerful in that. So, um, so yeah, as our understanding of this connection continues to grow, it is hoped that even better interventions in the future will emerge providing relief for those who suffer from anxiety. Um, and you know, some, some treatments that are just on the, uh, on the, on the cusp of being, um, mass produced are, um, small, uh, earbuds that you just put in and they stimulate your vagus nerve with ultrasound. So they do a little pulse of ultrasound right into the auricular branch of the vagus nerve. And those can really leave people feeling really great, really calm and really chill, but you have to do meditation with those too. Those don't work just by themselves. You have to do some kind of an adjunct therapy. Um, for those who are in phase one, if you just do the VNS by itself, you don't have the capacity to do meditation or anything like that. Vagus nerve stimulation of the neck, typically with ultrasound in my case, um, is almost immediately effective on a whole host of, of different ranges. So anyway, we'll, we'll definitely, I'm sure, do a video about that at some point in time here in the near future. But um, But yeah. Phase one, definitely a good option for anyone dealing with anxiety issues currently, and they just want something to help them right now. Um, two best things would be Hour of Power and Vegas Nerve Stimulation through the phase one program. Those are going to be the best two options that I know of. Um, there are a lot of other options like meditation, hypnosis, DNRS, limbic retraining, Gupta, some of these things are can be helpful, um, but again, those are like those are quite costly. Those can take months and months and months to be effective. Um, and when someone's in an in anxiety state, you really want to get them as 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 much relief as soon as you possibly can. Um, that's why things like vagus nerve stimulation can be so good for those types of anxiety disorders because it's just in it's almost. It's almost within that week, that first week, that people are like, wow, my relationship to my anxiety is like significantly better. Um, so, you know, again, getting getting real time treatments out in the field is is of primary uh, primary importance. So cool. Well, thanks so much for watching. That's gonna wrap it up for the for the main gist. We're gonna do some extra bonus stuff for those on Facebook um, and do some questions and and other stuff. But we're gonna end the stream here. Uh, on YouTube. And thanks guys for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe if you like this ad-free content uh, supported by the Vegas Nerve Stimulation Repair Program. Learn more on our Facebook group. Thank you. Link in the description. Um, see you. See